We're sitting here with Peggy Mills, a uh, local resident um, artist in the Bancroft area, and with Jane Kelly from the North Hastings Community Trust. And uh, we're talking about um, uh, issues of retirement income, uh, the need for uh, adequate retirement income, um, a uh, uh, situation that both um, Peggy and uh, Jane um, are familiar with. So, um, Jane, I, may, I wonder if you could start by just um, talking about North Hastings Community Trust. What is it and how did you become involved with Peggy? So, North Hastings Community Trust is a local anti poverty social justice nonprofit. We're very tiny, uh, one and a half staff, in fact. We're funded through the county and the United Way to address the impacts of poverty in all of North Hastings. We have very few resources. Um, but what we do have, we spread out in the community to help with emergency financial assistance and at the same time we're looking for sustainable, creative community responses to poverty. So we're doing things, initiating community gardens, we're starting a wood share project um, and we're also doing some work around hydro because that seems to be one of the biggest issues in North Hastings that's in fact um, causing people to lose their homes and causing people to go hungry. Um, so we've become quite involved in collectively trying to come up with a response to, to Hydro, to the provincial government, to address some of these issues. Um, we do in fact see it as a crisis in our area and I do believe affects a lot of rural Ontario. The cost of Hydro is so high that people cannot afford to feed their families and it's causing a lot of health issues. It's causing a lot of stress and it's, um, it's impacting, I would say, over half the population. So we're working with uh, a number of people in our community to try to put pressure on the provincial government to come up with a strategy that's fair for rural Ontario. Um, yeah, to make sure that people are living well. This is, in my mind, it's a human rights issue. Okay. So Peggy, how did you um, meet Jane and sort of get involved with the, uh, the uh, community Hastings? or the North Hastings Community Trust? Well, they had threatened to turn my hydro off and I came to her for assistance to see if I could um, find another way to to pay my bills. And what kind of situation were you in? Um, can you describe uh, the uh, maybe the way that uh, you, you had been living and the, the stress that maybe put upon you and the, what kind of decisions did you have to make around what you could buy and what you could um, sort of get not buying that sort of thing? Well, I was visiting the food bank twice a month and also I had health issues and I was traveling to Belleville for many trips to see the doctor and specialist and I was not reimbursed for any of this. And because of all the extra expenses, um, it never left very much to pay all the other necessities. And what can, can you tell me what your um, whereabouts do you live? Is it how far from Bancroft is it? Do you, um, is it very rural area? About 25 miles into MacArthur's from here. Mm -hmm. And um, I like it there. It's a retirement for me. But um, I didn't intend to move into my little shack and end up paying a second mortgage on my house through Hydro. No, do you currently have Hydro? No. It's just not back on? No. No, okay. I have a generator that someone lent me mm -hmm. and um, I'm able to flush my toilet now. I'm able to um, do my laundry, which is nice. I don't have to come in and pay $3.50 for a washing machine and drive 25 miles to use it. Mm -hmm. And I have um, water I can boil a kettle with and I'm able to do my dishes. so. It's just like the heavens have opened. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Well, and that's a good point because this is another yeah. difference um, between urban and rural energy is when you're in the rural area and you lose your hydro, you lose access to water because mm -hmm. you're relying on a pump. Um, yes. And that's enormous. So if you yes. don't have, and I get a lot of calls um, from folks who've had their hydro disconnected mm -hmm. and they can't shower. Mm -hmm. They can't have a glass of water. Um, 
Would you say that this issue is the, the main contributor to poverty issues in rural Ontario? Or is there other sort I of issues? I think there's many issues. Um, there's lack of employment here. Employment is mostly only seasonal, minimum wage. Nobody can live on that. Mm -hmm. EI is not sufficient. And anyone on government assistance is living far below the poverty line. So anyone on Ontario Works and Ontario Disability is not receiving enough money to live. Mm -hmm. So that combined with high hydro means that people are absolutely in dire straits. Mm -hmm. So Jane, when you look around um, at some of the, um, uh, the solutions that people are talking about, like increasing the CPP, um, uh, bumping up the GIS and all that sort of thing, um, do you think these things are sufficient or what do you think needs to happen? Kind of I think we need a lot. I think we need a whole lot more of goodwill. Um, I think that you know when we talk to policymakers and people in positions of power, there's a reluctance to do what we need, and I'm not sure where this comes from. Um, or we're told there's not adequate resources. I actually think that there are adequate resources, and we need to distribute them fairly, mm -hmm. so that everybody in our community can live well and have their basic needs met. Um, people are going hungry, mm -hmm. and uh, and then on top of that, losing your hydro you will be cold, mm -hmm. you know, and it's just like there's basic human rights and I think in a country like ours, why are we allowing this to happen? Mm -hmm. If there was a will to be good to each other, we would find the resources to do that. Yes. And so I think we need that will again. We need to be a kinder society. And how my neighbor is living reflects on me. And if we all felt like we needed to take care of each other, we would, we would be a healthier place to be. Mm -hmm. And I've been in this position just over a year and have learned so much about hidden poverty. Um, there are people that are homeless. There's a lot of people actually who are homeless and mm -hmm. we just don't know about it and we don't see it. Peggy, I wonder if you can talk a little bit about your art. Um, oh. You know, what? Uh, how long have you been an artist? Uh, um, is that your... Oh my gosh. And, uh, oh. Tell me um, like what it means to you to, to be an artist and the things that you create. It's part of expressing myself and uh, I enjoy it and it's, it's a natural talent. My thoughts and my ideas are all from myself and I like to put them down on canvas mm -hmm. and create abstract work and um, I have a daughter that's the same way mm -hmm. and the two of us managed to be able to show her it was asked to be displayed. Mm -hmm. So that made my day. <laughs> and do you find comfort in your art to, yes. to deal with these sort of situations? Yes. If I can see to paint <laughs> <laughs> by candlelight. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but you know, I'm just a drop in the bucket here. There's people in worse predicaments over this than I am. And I've seen it. Mm -hmm. I've seen a lot of people that are complaining, not complaining. Maybe I complained about it, but they're afraid to speak up. They just make do. Mm -hmm. But they have nothing. They have far less than I have. And mm -hmm. um, I feel that I'm, I'm grateful for what I do have. And I'm grateful to people like Jane, who is striving to make it best for everyone. Not, it's just not about me. And I wonder if we get you to comment about the uh you know, they need to provide adequate income from whatever source that may be. Um, now, I imagine in another country it would be sort of like maybe bumping up the GIS or uh, bumping up OAS, that sort of thing. Maybe you can talk about uh, the, uh, the absolute need for sort of adequate income. Kind of well, again, I go back to like, what is the will? What is our will? And how do we want to be, how do we want to be perceived in the world? And how do we want to be perceived by our own people? Um, what kind of society do we want to live in? Mm -hmm. Do we want to live in a society where a big chunk of the population is hungry? I don't think so. How do we want to treat our seniors as they grow old? Do we want seniors to be underhoused and underfed and sick because mm -hmm. of that? Or do we want, in fact, put in place systems that are going to ensure an adequate income as we age? Mm -hmm. I know myself and a lot of my peers, we have no idea what will be in store for us in the next 10, 20, 30 years. Mm -hmm. And uh, the way we currently are operating, we're not very hopeful. Okay.